Recently, some audiences have brought my attention to one of my previous videos, which shows how to fetch data from Airtable and display it using a dynamic carousel. Some comments say the dynamic carousel does not display the products, and if there is a duplicate record in the Airtable, VoiceFlow simply ignore the duplicates and only displays one of the records. In this video, we will address these issues with a function to fetch product data directly from Airtable and display it in a dynamic carousel. Here is the Airtable we will use in this demo. It has three flower products. Each has the flower name, price, Stripe payment link, content, and image links. If you want to know how to create an Airtable, please watch our previous video. We will need the database ID and the table ID, which we can find in the URL. We select this part of the URL and make a copy of it. Please save it because we will use it later. Now we will need to get the personal token key. In the drop down window, we can click on the Builder Hub. On the personal access tokens, we can see the list containing the tables. Select the table we are going to use, and you can regenerate a token for the table, or you can still use the old one. Now, as we already have the data, the table ID, and the personal token key, we can move to Voice Flow to build a demo bot. On the Voice Flow canvas, we drop a set block. We set the variable table ID and paste the table ID here, and we can set another variable. We select the variable air table key and paste the personal token key here. We will use these variables later. Now let us drop a function block on the canvas and click to create a function. We enter the function name, fetch air table data for dynamic carousel. In the description, we enter, fetch air table data for product recommendation using dynamic carousel. Of course, you can use your own function name and description. Click the create function button and we see a function template. We will write a new function and we can delete the template. We will first extract input variables from the function arguments. We use the same variable names and save the values in the const variables. On the right, in the input variables, we add air table key and table ID, so the user can pass these two variables to the function. Next we validate the input variables. If one of them is null, we will return the error path. The trace type is debug, and in the payload, we pass the message telling the user missing the required input variable, air table key, or table ID. Next, we define the URL for making API calls. The first part is the common API URL from Airtable. We need to add the table ID to point to the table we will use. We then configure the fetch request to send the method and headers. The method is get. In the headers, we add the authorization and bearer with the Airtable key, which is the personal token. Next, we use a try and catch block. In the catch block, if there is any error, we return an error path. Sorry, here it should be path error dot. In the trace, we have the debug type, and in the payload, we show the error message. In the try block, we will make API calls to fetch data. We define the const variable response, and call the fetch function by passing the arguments URL and config. We will check if the response status is OK. If not, we throw new error with the message, HTTP error. Status of response dot status. If the response is OK, we will extract the JSON body from the response and save it in the const variable response body. Next, we validate the response body structure. If the response body is null or it is not an object, we throw new error with the message of invalid or missing response body from the API. When we see the error message, we know what step has gone wrong. After all the checks, we are ready to get the data. We will extract error table records from the response body and save them in the const variable records. Next, we define an array to save all the product data. We loop through the records and push the fields of each record in the products array. As we have all the product data, we will generate carousel items from the products. We use a const variable carousel items to save all the data. We map the product to the carousel item. We put the product name in the carousel cards title together with the price. The dollar sign indicates the price is in dollar. We extract the product price. In the card description, we have the text value of product content. 
The price and name should be first letter capitalized. The image URL is from the product image link. For the card buttons, we have the name of by product, so the user can click to check out if he wants to buy a specific flower product, which will be a Stripe payment link. In the payload, the action will be an open URL type, which will show a new window. The URL is the product payment link. Finally, we will return the carousel trace with generated items. We return the next path of success, and the trace type is carousel. The payload cards have the value of the carousel items we have generated. On the right, we add a path of success, and another one, error. We have the description of the function. You can also upload an image for this function. Now let us click the Run button to do a test. We need to input the table ID and the Airtable key. We got an error showing that the table ID is not defined. Let us check the variable in the function, and I found the table ID is misspelled. Let us correct it. Let's run again. This time, the error shows that it is an invalid object. Let us check again, and make some corrections. The word fields has been misspelled. Also, the word products is missing a letter O. Let us run again. This time it shows success. In the traces, we can see the carousel cards populated with all the product data. Back to the voice flow canvas, in the function block, we select the function we just created, and in the input variable mapping, we enter the variable table ID and the other variable air table key. Now let us do a test run. We see the carousel successfully shown here with beautiful flower products. Each has name, price, content, and a byproduct button. This indicates that the data has been fetched from the air table and shown in the carousel. Let us click the button to buy a product. Whoops. Something is wrong. Do another click. We have the same thing. It might be the Stripe payment link. Let us go back to the canvas. Let us check the function. Aha! The payment link should be first letter capitalized. Let us correct that. This time it should be OK. Let us click on a buy product button. Here we go. We see the Stripe checkout page. If we update the quantity, we see it works, and we can click to pay. Perfect. Next, we will test the duplicates in the air table. Let us select this record and duplicate the type. And we do a test run. In the carousel, we can see the pink hyacinth, and there is another one. This is the original one. This is the duplicated. But I noticed that it has a copy word. We are going to remove the copy word, and to see if the carousel can display cards with duplicate products. Back to the air table, we delete the copy word from the duplicated record. Let us run a test again. We see the carousel with one pink hyacinth. At the end, we see the other one. These two are identical, which shows the carousel can display duplicated products. Hope this helps. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.